Okay, so we've got a mix in here, a couple of drops of um, white, it's gone into the mix, 50% into thinner, so it's really very, very wet. So what we're doing, we're just picking out panels, centers of panels, and we're just lightening up as we go round. What we're trying to do is just give this a bit of depth. It is quite a, a flat looking model. So we're just literally just picking out centers, avoiding the blue, admittedly. And then what we can do, once we're happy like that, we can just give a gentle blow right over the top, going over the gray. And it's just to give it a bleached effect absolutely everywhere just like that it's only a quick one because obviously it's going to be lightened up and we've got to do metallic areas and bits and pieces like that but that's that all nicely done so I say we'll let that dry off for about 10 minutes okay so there we're all totally dry nice smooth finish I'm happy with the camo and how it's all gone now I've been playing with various um, sort of schemes and everything now there's two schemes available to the Raptor as you can see in this photo here you get obviously that gray one, uh, which is like this scheme as it is here, or you've got the other one, which is the metallic. Obviously what happens is, is that the metallic is the modern one um, with the radar, you know, absorbent, and it's obviously very stealthy and all the rest of it compared to the other one, which has obviously got the normal paint job. So if you wanted to, really, there's no rights and wrongs. You could do it with a normal paint job, um, which is, you know, very straightforward to do and away you go um, if you're going to do it that way what you're going to have to do is mask in reverse so what i'm doing here i've started to mask up these leading edges um, and all the exterior surfaces um, uh, leaving all the camo color and everything because what i'm going to do here is actually give it a metallic finish um, it sounds a lot harder than it really is um, there are products coming out as we said before that will hopefully give you be able to do this effect but what i'm going to show you in a minute once we've got this all masked up and done and talk about is how to give it that lovely metallic finish um, um, so this is what you're going to have to decide if you're going to do it the other way what you want to do is obviously mask on the inside um, and then obviously then you'll be spraying these outer edges which I've got masked up so whichever way you're doing it if you are then I would suggest doing it in something like an XF19 or a light ghost grey something like that for the ex external edges but what we're doing here we're doing it two ways. We've got some thin um, jammy dog tape here, um, and then obviously we've got some six mil Tamiya. Now the official width, if you like, is actually five. Um, real is actually a sort of five and a half mil. So if you leave sort of about half a mil hanging over, which is enough to sort of fold over, um, then you'll be about right. So all we're doing. We're just masking up these areas. As I say, these leading edges, it's double thickness. Um, so obviously we just run it up to the edge here. And all the way down making sure the tapes are straight from following that line like so and then obviously we'll do a slightly longer one to the outside just like so and then all we do we just cut these in and then obviously we've got the extension which is what we'll do on this bit and then cut that in so you get this sort of t-shaped dog leg if you look at the reference photos it says just cutting it there but actually the real ones have it where it's sort of cut in like that obviously on there and then the same on the undersides uh, we've obviously done uh, the actual angle for the air intakes as well so all we've done is follow the tape down turned the corner and gone along so it's the same width as you like as the actual lip of the to the tape um, very straightforward to do so i'll get this all masked up and then we can get some of this metallic finish on okay so as you can see all masked up ready to go so how are we going to get that nice metallic effect what we've actually got here is some alkaline steel straightforward um, no problem at all it's quite a dark color anyway but then what i did I put a drop or two uh, into some air in there. airbrush. What we did was put a drop or two into um, an airbrush, probably about two or three mil, and then we used some of their um, gloss black, uh, which is their base, and just added it to it, just to darken it up. And what we've done is we've darkened it up probably by about sort of 25% for a darker color. And what that does, that gives us that nice type of effect and here we've already done these here and as you can see that's not a lighter paint on the outside that's just it marks masked up and the same with the inside and as you move it you can see that it's got color and then you catch it in the different lights and you can see that it's actually the silver effect on it so it darkens it all up 
and that's exactly what we were after. So what I have a hat I've got here is a bottle and it had only a little bit in the bottom so I've added some black to it. We're still using it neat, we're not thinning it any way at all. So then we'll just pop it in there and what I'll do is just cut off a cotton bud here to use as a, a paint stirrer. Okay, nice in there. And make sure that the black is mixed in with the, the silver so you don't get any nasty surprises when you're spraying. And there we go. So we're going to spray this just like we do with Alkalide. So the air pressure is a little bit higher than normal. It's probably more like 20 psi because we're putting on the dusting coat. We're not trying to cover this. We're just trying to give it a sort of a shade. So all we're going to do is literally coming along and putting on a shade. Now if we just turn on the extractor before we get covered in silver and we just mist on a coat absolutely everywhere and try and keep it as even as possible just like this so say so you catch it in some lights you can see the actual the silverness now coming through yet in others it's actually very very reflective so there we go that's one bit gone so if we just fill this up again because obviously you've got to do the other side as well. So if we just flip it over and just spray everywhere. And let's say you're not trying to cover this in silver, we're just trying to mist on a light coat. There we go, we're done. So we just dried down, because obviously being out flat, it just dried very, very quickly. But what it'll do, it darkens it down as much as it actually makes it silver as well. And that's the type of effect we're after. So we should be able to now, being out flat, grab the other half. So we're just gonna silver up the front as well. There we go, that's done. So if we just dry that back, because what we're going to also do is going to pop around with a micro cloth just to knock a bit of this off. So if we just turn this off now, turn off the extractor, it's a bit quieter. Okay, so then when we unmask this, we should get what we were just showing you a minute ago. I hope you can see it on that wingtip already, but you get that nice grey area as you catch it in the light. And that's what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get the best of both worlds. So we've got the silverness and the flat of the grey. So if we just whip these intake covers off that we made up. So I hope you can see on that intake there, you can see the actual difference in the colour. So if we just pop these off as well. And there we go, so there we go, that gives us our nice silver effect. It also takes care of this nice grey area where we can see, and as I say, different lights, you catch it in different lights, gives you that slightly different weathered effect to it so it gives us that nice silver effect that we're actually after and then also by the time we go around and we put in some of the black details and it has a wash and various things it will really make it all come to life so if we just add some of the details onto this we can get our first look at what the wrap is going to look like and there we go so that gives us our very nice wrap to shape and a look at things to come. Okay, so we're over here now. Now what I've actually done now is given this a coat of um, Johnson's Clear, or your future, 25 PSI 
two very light misty coats on there. Now the reason to do that was to really lock it in because I didn't want to get silver um, for the top, obviously you can get on this everywhere. Um, I didn't want to get over my hands and I didn't want to transfer it obviously into the white areas and the bits and pieces like that. So it's just a way of locking it all in and it makes it a lot more handleable and we're not going to sort of wear through things and bits and pieces like that. So there we go, that's our, our basic finish. And I think, you know, now it's got the actual, um, the Johnson's on there as well. It gives it another bit of sheen um, and a very nice metallic finish. Also, it does tend to bring out the blues and the grays a lot more as well. Now, the next step we're getting on with um, is using the uh, Cross Delta, um, I would say photo etch, but it's not quite photo etch, it's um, in between. Um, very, very nice. I've done two of them already. Now, these literally just stick on. They're self-adhesive and you stick them in place. So if I just show you one here, um, the main thing with these is obviously just lining it up uh, out of the way. All you do, um, there's nice instructions and you basically follow them uh, as they say on the sheet very nicely and you've got a little template of how they lay out as well on the back which is quite handy. But basically, you come along, grab your piece you want um, and this is the size, I've already done a couple of these you might notice, but that's in these areas in here. Okay, then all you do is come along and you have to make sure that, because there is a left and a right, because they are slightly funny angle to each other. So all I do is literally push it in, happy with how it is, and you squash down. Now, it's a very, a very good, and I've been peeling these and trying to get them to come off and all the rest of it, and I can't really, so I don't think you're gonna have to worry about super gluing them in place um, and bits and bits, uh, pieces like that, because they really do hold quite nicely there. So that's that one in. So then obviously next you just come along with the next one to the next area. And the nice thing with these as well, they're quite bendy. If that was normal photo etch and you peel them off the sheet, you end up bending the actual uh, metal itself. And uh, then you're in all types of problems. But with these, I must admit, they do go on very nicely. I mean, literally just push in and then just give them a nice firm squash to keep them in there. But if I bring you in now, there we go that's those metal areas in there so obviously it's all this here you're looking at um, and obviously it takes care of those seams now if you're not using um, this first set you're going to have to take care of those seams but because we were we knew we weren't going to have to worry about it they're a bit shiny at the moment but with a bit of a dull coat i think that'll knock them back and be quite uh, realistic so these ones here are slightly more complicated for the actual burners themselves so what we actually do if we do a bottom first, so you just peel off a bottom. Now lining these up is the tricky bit. Um, so obviously what I tend to do is push it to the end. And when I can't see anything else, and it's all on there. So there we go, that's the bottom part done. If I just bring you around in a little bit, you can see it's a little bit better. So that's the that one on like that. And obviously what we do, we grab the top. Okay, and then all I do is line up one side. So I lined up this edge here with it. Okay, push to the back and then roll it over the top. Now you do have to give it a bit of a, a squeeze in there to tuck it in. Now there is a tiny little gap you get between the two, which one I'm gonna do is run a little bit of metallic in there, but it's just a little bit that goes in. So that's that one done. Then obviously you just need the back bit. Now you have to allow a tiniest bit of overhang but if you line it up with a little groove as you see it, you'll be absolutely fine. So then again, we're just gonna start on the other side. Something like that, I'll just roll it over. And there we go, that's another one done, all ready to be clipped on. So then what we're saying is, it comes along, okay, and it just literally clips in just like that there. So that's in, and obviously you'd say it's a bit shiny, but we're not that back a bit. So by the time you come along with your other one, and I'll have to hold it, because obviously it's not glued in, we get this type of effect with our metal areas. And then what we're going to do, I think we're gonna put a little square of foam in there, um, just to add it as a FOD co uh, cover um, in the orange or sort of the day glow red as they are, to make it give it that effect. But that's really those bits done and using the cross delta. And I have to say, you know, I know I, I complained a little bit about the undercarriage, but certainly for the actual, um, that set, 
worth every penny. We'll go with that, so we'll have that in the cockpit, please. So I'll finish getting these bits on here, and then the next stage we're going to do, I'm actually going to um, decal the entire thing. Put all those on, obviously, I'll talk you a little bit through that, and then we can get on with really bringing it all together. Okay, so we've been um, decaling this for the last sort of hour or so. Um, and as you can see, we've got them all on here. Things to remember is um, check your references before you go sticking them on. For instance, the stars and bars for the wing um, and the ones that go under here, they've got the numbers around the wrong way. It tells you to put the smaller ones on the wings and then the big ones, well, it just doesn't know. Um, unfortunately, it does tend to happen to um, revel a little bit. Um, but not normally with Academy, so it's a bit of a strange one. So that's the thing with that. Um, these inserts which go in here, um, make sure they sit in nice and flush and perhaps get a pin out and give them a bit of a prick with a pin or perhaps with a sharp blade of a knife just to let the air out and that way they'll settle down and conform a lot better because they do like to ride up just a touch. So do that and then give them another bit. Underneath there's no real problems, it all goes together very very nicely. So if we just show you um, the basics of deckling on these two um, make sure you're doing it to the outer part so we've just got these bits to go on so all i do i've got some normal warm water um, and then all you actually have is a clamp now into this which is uh, i've just put a couple of drops of uh, micro sole in there which is uh, uh, the decal setter um, which i just find it speeds things up and it just gives them a little bit of a soft edge and it makes them bend around a little bit more so what we do we'll just Checking your references, making sure you've got your lefts and rights all okay. So what we'll do, we'll wet that entire area, and as you can see, it's beading off quite a lot. Then we'll just take the AK. Now, remember to get these around the right way. The shadowing normally falls to the rear. Uh, he says, picking up the wrong one in that case. Shadowing to the rear. Okay, and we're just gonna place that in the middle just for the moment. And then what we'll do is we'll do all of these together, both sides together at the same time. So same on the other side, and we'll pump that one in there. Then we'll just get the little symbols, which are the, the markings which go above your, let me just grab this other one at the same time, that go above the actual, the in this case, AK, but it's actually with unit marking. Just going to put them one as well, just a moment. And okay, if we work through this one for a moment, keep it nice and wet so it can maneuver quite easily. And then what we'll do, we'll just grab this one as well, and we'll sit this one up on top, just like that. Then we can have a look at the references and see how it's actually going to go. So it's going to be quite low. You might be able to just push them gently with your finger. So if we just grab the squadron unit, which in this case is the 90th fighter squadron. Okay, good look at the references. And what we're going to do is just try and keep it in this actual main area here. So we'll line the bottom one up first. And we sat that in, and that's quite happy with that position. Okay, then the AK goes above that. Okay, and then the actual, so it sits all together. So you can roughly line them up. Then what you do, get a cotton bud, moisten it a little bit. Okay, give it a ring out, give it a roll on some paper towel out of the way there. Then all you do is roll it over them. And what it should do is soak up all the water and just keep them all in position. That one's done, very happy with that. Then all we do, just draw off the brush in with the micro set and just lock those in position. Those top bars as well, just like that. Leave that to one side, then all we do afterwards, we can come along and put the night navigation mode in there. So we just do the same for the other one. Okay, so now we've got that, um, all the decklings done and we're quite happy. What we do is let that sit for about an hour um, and then what can happen is we can give that event a coat of future before we come back with a wash and move on. In the meantime, we can then crack on with these um, engine parts at the back. Now, they're absolutely gorgeous and metally and shiny and fantastic chrome finish and people will give their right eye for a finish like that, but unfortunately, that's not the type of finish we want for this particular model. So, what we're going to do, we're going to... got the airbrush going here. We're going to use a little bit of magnesium and what we're going to do is very lightly going to dust this on. Now this is going to be 
one thing Alclad is very good at doing because normally Alclads would like to go on a shiny surface and all the rest of it um, and one of the bonuses to it is when you spray it onto something very very flat and shiny it does tend to give a very very nice metal finish so if I just do one like this just like so and we zoom you in I can show you what we've just got here so if we move that out of the way so this is your normal finish and as you can see very nice and shiny and this is what we've just done we've just dulled it right down but it's still halfway there it's a nice metal finish but it's not obviously in your face like this and what we're going to do we're going to vary the shade to give the different areas because when you look at the references these back areas aren't all the same um, the middle bar instance area is always a little bit darker lighter towards the outside so what we do we're going to give it a couple of coats of this mask it up and then we can either freehand paint in if you wanted to or we say we can mask and spray to put those others in so what we do we just carry on putting on the Alclads on. So usual thing with Alclads in spray, make sure you're well ventilated and just build it up slowly. Don't go blasting it in there because otherwise you end up flooding the actual part that you're spraying and it ends up with a very cloudy horrible look to it. But it will give us a nice effect for these engines. So we're happy with that. So we'll just leave that to one side and we'll just do the other one. Okay, so we're all totally dry. Um, so the next thing really we can do this before we bring it all really together is to get some uh, weathering onto this. Now, obviously, if you look at different reference photos um, of the Raptor, you can see various, various different styles of weathering on there. Now, the thing to remember is that all um, stealthy type aircraft, they tend to have um, radar absorbent um, paintwork. Uh, which basically means um, as the radar waves are coming at it they're absorbed into it now one thing that you'll notice with them all certainly if you look at Raptors now and um, there's a few photos going around the net now they look extremely weathered and obviously um, I've seen photos recently and it showed the F-16s in um, the similar type of paintwork obviously having testing um, extremely dirty now the way to think about it is like naval aircraft um, you get corrosion control where they obviously they paint and respray joins and things to obviously stop the corrosion getting in um, through the paint layer so if anything starting it gets, gets a little bit worn immediately they'll touch in and spray it um, it's working in reverse because joins and areas like that get extremely dirty because the paintwork the texture of it absorbs dirt um, and grime and that gets stuck into it it's a bit like having a flat coat um, on your car instead of a gloss a gloss obviously dirt and that washes off quite easily but if it's flat it sticks to it so what I'm going to do with this particular Raptor I'm going to give this a, co uh, a coat of the dark wash all over so we're literally just going to slap this absolutely everywhere now as you can see this is repelling quite well because obviously we've got alkalines and that in there but if you keep rubbing it in you can break the surface tension and you can get this into those panel lines and joints and bits and pieces like that now this is going to be a sort of two stage uh, approach to this. Uh, this coat is going to be really for just getting into the panel lines because obviously we're not going to get it into the, the surface but we can certainly get it into all those areas we need but you can see it's pretty much repelling. Now one way to stop this you could have a, a couple of drops of dishwater soap um, to the surface. Okay so the wash is totally dry now um, it's been on for about sort of 20 minutes it's dried off got a couple of little damp patches down the back here but not really worried about that. Also what I've done I've just put a bit of the black wash um, all over the gear and in the doors and the usual bits and pieces just to give them a little bit of depth um, I'm sure you've all seen me do this a million times before but with the wash all we're going to do is wipe this all cleanly off as I say we're going to come back this is just really for panel lines we're going to come back for weathering um, we're going to put it over a flat coat so all we're going to do moisten the cloth a little bit back of the hand take any heavy off and literally we're just going to rub our way in quite a bit of moisture because we're not really worried about um, you know obviously directions and things like that for the minute so really this is just for the the benefit of panel lining so if we just take off roughly off of here first you can get an idea of what we're up to so there you go as you can see we've got the panel line obviously running down here all around the lighting system there all around the flap and the bits and pieces and if I just show you a area over the back here I'm going to do take this off so we can actually see very nice and clearly 
um, the panel lining, um, obviously around this area and all the rest of it. So I'll just continue wiping this all away. Okay, now do you remember that bit we had, which was this bit, which was completely warped, out of shape and is completely horrible. Well, what we've got here, you might be able to see through the seam, is some boiling hot water. Now the thing is, if you put resin into boiling hot water, it goes soft. Trouble is, you leave it in there too long, it goes to very, very soft. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have some spring-loaded clamps at the ready. Okay, what we're gonna do is just drop this in. It's a flat-bottomed container. Okay, and we're gonna let this sink to the bottom. Okay, then we'll quickly get it up. And as you see, it's really, really floppy. This is one of those ones where, you know, blinking, you miss it, okay? And then what we do, we just let it sit here and go hard. And it won't take long to go hard, but if when you put it into hot water, it goes extremely flexible. And to be honest, that was a little bit too long, but you get it out, and as you might have seen, it is very, very flexible. And then as soon as it's on, as you can see, it's done, it's all flat. It's that simple. It's not as hard work as it can be. And that's a pretty good fit, we're happy with that. But what I'll do is just for argument shake, uh, sake, shake, I will show you again. Okay, so get your resin part, pop it in the hot water, okay? Only leave it in there for a little bit. Comes out all floppy, bendy, put it down, hard surface, push it flat, okay? Let it sit just for a few minutes and as it cools it rehardens but don't leave it in there for goodness sake too long if you do it will physically turn to mush and then when you try and pick it up it stretches and as soon as you're into the stretching side of thing you're really going to have trouble because there's no way it's going to form then to your actual aircraft itself so over here we've got the Raptor we've put it on its gear now um, really to get it off the surface and I glued in place the um, tails are now glued in as we can see up here and uh, so are the uh, flapperons at the back here or the flaps uh, the tail surfaces they're not yet they're just sat for um, like that just in case you get a box that's too small okay so we bring it along it's gone all hard now okay and then what we can actually do we can just have a test bit to make sure it's going to go in okay and I think it will be fine once we sort it out, just the little bits. Okay, so the easiest way, if you get your um, um, sprue, which has got the, the color that you wanted to on there, if you just hook him out a minute, and we'll just chip off, and <clears throat> he says, looking for his decent pair of scissors instead of his rough ones. Sorry, can't seem to find them. There we go. Okay, so what we got, we got our clear part. We can put it on the top of our plastic, of our resin piece to see how it's going to fit. And it is a very good fit. No problem about that. Just out of interest, what I've actually done here, he says grabbing it very, very carefully because it'll still be wet. Do you remember that clear part that we had on here that was horrible, um, covered in? Just to show it can be done, here is that very same part. All I did, sanded it down, cleaned it up, um, and went over it and it's got a slight tint to it because all I actually did was get a tiniest amount of the orange, clear orange, put it in with the clear, mixed it together, and then brushed it over to give us a slight tint because I was a bit concerned about obviously molding this one into shape. But it just goes to show with a little bit of patience and working your way through the grits, you could come along and use this one to fit on top.